Hi, so in this video I'm going to go through stoichiometry. So stoichiometry is using a balanced chemical reaction to work out the relationship between moles of reactants and the moles of product. So when we're looking at the balanced equation, we can only compare moles. So mass would need to be converted to moles and any other kind of units would need to be converted to moles to be able to use the equation. So it's kind of like baking. So when you're when you're limited to a certain reagent or a certain part of the recipe, you will have to scale that recipe to accommodate for that limiting reagent. So for example, if you're baking a cake and you need three eggs to do the cake and you've only got two eggs, you would have to scale back that cake recipe to accommodate for it. So chemical synthesis is the same. And we use stoichiometry to make the recipe balanced and to make the reaction uh, proceed. And we use this stoichiometry in order to work out how much mass we expect to get and or how many moles we expect to get. And then we can compare this to the actual values that we uh, obtain and work out percentage yields. So first of all, before we get into percentage yields, let's look at stoichiometry. So this is the reaction I'm going to use. So NH3, HNO3 going to NH4, NO3. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that this is balanced. So I've got one nitrogen, two nitrogens. I've got one, two on the product side, so that's good. Hydrogens, I've got three, four. I've got four, so that's good. And lastly, oxygens, I've got three and I've got three. So this is a balanced reaction. Now, this reaction is telling me that one mole of NH3 and one mole of HNO3 produces one mole of the product NH4NO3. That's a one to one to one relationship. If I had only 0.5 moles of this, I would need 0.5 moles of this and I would produce 0.5 moles of this. So the amount in this being one to one to one would be the same from reactants to your products. Now another example we'll have where we have different coefficients. Okay, so this one here we've got two calcium plus O2 gives us two CaO. So checking that it's balanced, this one looks balanced, but we've got two calciums, two calciums, two oxygens, and we've got two out the front, so we've got two oxygens. So it's a balanced reaction. So my ratio is two to one to two. So if I, instead of having two mole of this, had one mole, then how many O2 would I have? So if this is two, this is half the amount. So if I've got one, this is gonna be 0 0.5 mole. And this one's the same, it's two and two, so this would be the same there, so it'd be one mole. Okay, so a two to one to two, I just look at the relationship between them. So if this is, the O2 is half the amount of calcium, I just apply that. So say I'm working with six mole of the calcium. And oxygen is still half that amount because it's a two to one relationship. So that's now going to be three mole. And my product is the same, so it's going to be six mole. So that's how we can use the mole and stoichiometry together. Now, let's have a look at an example of how we can do one of these calculations. of NH3, how many mole of product would I achieve? So the relationship's one to one. So my mole of NH4, NO3 would be the same because they're one to one relationships. So it'd be 5.2 mole. Now, if I wanna convert this into grams, so the question might be asking, what is the mass of the product? So then I go back to my triangle. So the number of moles is my mass divided by molecular weight. So to work out the mass, 
is the moles times the molecular weight. So the number of moles is giving to us. And the molecular weight's not, so let's work it out. The molecular weight equals 14 plus 4 times 1 for the 4 hydrogens, uh, plus 14 plus 16 times 3 for the oxygens. So this one gives us 80 grams per mole for the molecular weight, so it would be 416 grams. Now let's do one more example where we don't have one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one relationships. Okay, so with this question, we are told that 5.6 grams of iron is produced, and we want to know how many moles of Fe2O3 and Al2O3 would be required to produce 5.6 grams of Fe. So in order to use the relationship that we have, so the 1 to 2 to 2 to 1, we need to firstly convert this into moles. So 5.6 so remember our triangle. So the number of moles is the mass divided by the molecular weight. So the molecular weight is 55.85 for each Fe. Now, just remember this may, you may already know this, but I'll just remind you that although there's a coefficient of two out the front of the Fe, that doesn't mean that we need to change that molecular weight because the molecule is still Fe. So I only need to write down one um, atom for Fe, which is 55.85 from the periodic table. So we got 0.1 mole. Okay, so we've got 0 0.1 here for our 2. That means we've got 0 0.1 for our other 2. And looking at that relationship here, so this is twice as many as we have for this one because we've got 2 to 1. So this will be half the amount, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So the answer would be 0 0.05 mole for each one of that Fe2O3 and Al2O3. So remember when using this, if we've got a mass, we need to convert it to moles. We can use that relationship. And now I could even say how many grams of Fe2O3 is required to produce this 5.6 grams of product, assuming 100% conversion and no limiting reagents. So that would be just simply putting it back into this triangle I know my number of moles. I can work out the mass if I can firstly solve for the molecular weight from the periodic table. So thank you for watching this video and we'll see you next time.